Hello, everybody. This is Mr. Rogers, and welcome to Biology in the Basement, day two. So I hope you guys had a good day one. Hope you guys can understand the structure of the class and what we're going to do. Um, if you have any questions, obviously get a hold of me. So claim evidence and reasoning is a structure to understand scientific problems. It's a way that scientists view the world. And um, for someone like me, this is how I assess and problem solve in my own brain. And so it's, it's one of many different ways to problem solve, but in biology, it's their best way in a way that we're gonna use consistently through this class. So I want you to take a second and pause and go through those bottom two questions. This is just assessing your prior knowledge. So you write these down in your notes. Um, I'm gonna check and see what you guys kind of had in your notes before you, know, you learned things. That way I could see if you grew in these areas. So the actual definitions of CER is a claim is a statement that answers a question. So if someone asks you a question, what is the best sandwich in the world? An answer could be a claim could be a ham sandwich is the best sandwich. It's, it's answering a question. It's a statement that answers a question. Evidence is using actual scientific data to support a claim. Now, it's really easy if I say a ham sandwich is the best sandwich in the world. My evidence is because I like it. That's not very scientific. We need more numbers. We need actual data. So I can go online. I can find that 55% of sandwiches ordered at Subway contain ham. Or ham has been the number one sandwich by uh, Time Magazine for the last 50 years in the United States. Both of those are made up. Um, we want to use actual real data, and so we Google that, and we find real data, but for this purpose, that works for us right now. And then reasoning is connecting your evidence to explain your claim with what we know about science or what we have learned. Um, so we're using actual scientific principles to answer the claim with the evidence. So um, claim, ham sandwich is the best sandwich. Evidence, 55% of people order it from Subway. Reasoning is because ham has a lot of fat in it and fat allows um, or makes humans actually crave it and enjoy it when they're eating it and the taste buds um, react to it better than other meats. And so people enjoy ham more. Another way to look at CER is with this equation. Claim plus evidence plus reasoning equals your explanation. And it kind of breaks down what each section is. So claim is what do you know? Evidence is how do you know that? And reasoning is what does your evidence, or how does your evidence, or why does your evidence support your claim? So this is kind of an overall picture where we're going. So eventually, especially towards the end of this lesson and towards the end of this year, we're going to keep expanding upon CER and they're going to become more and more complex. We're going to start really small. We're going to start with silly examples. We're going to start with like um, basic, basic ways of looking at things. And then we're going to keep building into this. So every kind of topic we talk about in the next couple of weeks is going to have a CER based narrative behind it. And throughout the year, there's going to be a CER based narrative. And so it's something that's going to continuously come back. So this is my uh, statement right now is if you struggle with this, if you go through today and you're like, CER is the hardest thing I've ever done in my life, then get a hold of me and we can have a one on one lesson and we can figure it out together because this is something that will set up everything else. And so this is an extremely important topic. It's not super biology based, but it's something that kind of gives us the scaffolding to build off of. So we're going to start with an easy, ridiculous example. So this is a commercial I found for a car um, on YouTube. And I want you to see what her claim is, what is her evidence, and what is her reasoning? What's connecting the evidence to her claim? So I'll give you guys a second. I'll pause for a second, pause my video, and go ahead and watch it and answer these questions. Another example, one I came up with just randomly, and it's not scientific at all, is the focus question is, what is the best TV show of all time? The claim in my household would be The Office is the best TV show of all time. Now, claim could be anything. You could pick any show you want. I would have picked The Office. Now, I had to Google some evidence. Like, I can't just say, because uh, me and my wife like The Office. Um, I need to actually find evidence. And I want evidence that had data in it, because that supports my answer better. So data is super important. You want numbers. Um, we're going to talk about two kinds of evidence. There's quantitative and qualitative. Um, quantitative actually uses numbers. It's more universal. Um, qualitative, we're, we're speaking about people's opinions, how things are. 
quantitative, it's a set number. So in 2019, The Office, according to Netflix, was watched a total of 60.8 billion minutes. Next closest was 18.4 billion minutes for a TV show. The Office also scored a 10 out of 10 on IMDb. Both sources that I used are credible. I didn't use BillyWatchesTV.com or some random mom's blog from the internet. I used actual real things, real sources that have real data. Um, that's important. We're going to talk a lot about sources in this class. Uh, for science, sources mean a lot. Uh, you're going to find on, if you Google anything scientific online, you're going to find a real source and you're going to find a fake source basically for everything. We have to find out what's real and what's not. So my reasoning here is I actually used information for, from my research to kind of get my reasoning. So my claim was office, the best TV show, the evidence, how much minutes and the ratings. And the reasoning is trying to explain the evidence. According to IMDb review, the office has a mix of funny but touching moments that make viewers laugh but feel comfortable and forget their own problems. That's why it's watched so much. That's why it has the highest rating. And that's why people enjoy um, the show so much. And so that's an example of a CER, very simple, straightforward CER. So I have a couple just like review questions here. There's three of them. Pause, go through all three, and then I'll go through the answers. Just write it down in your notes really quick. So which of the following do you believe best represents a definition for a claim? A statement that expresses the answer or conclusion to a question or problem? A question that somebody might ask? C, a response to a question, or D, a statement that does not answer a question. So whenever we do multiple choice, we always look for questions that we can throw away. So we know right away, D, a statement that does not answer a question, is nothing we ever talked about that makes no sense for what a claim is. Uh, a, a statement that expresses the answer or conclusion to a question or problem. Uh, I don't know. We're going to keep that one around for a while. B, a question that somebody might ask. No, that's a question. So a claim is going to be probably between A and C. I'm going to go with C. So a response to a question. I think that's the best way. Um, it's a claim. Uh, a, a statement that expresses the answer or conclusion to a question or problem. I, it's not a bad, but I just don't like the word conclusion. Where we're just trying to state something. Okay. Which one of the following do you believe best represents the definition for evidence? A, information that does not appropriate support the claim. B, a statement that answers a question. C, scientific data that supports the claim. D, a question that supports the claim. So we can throw out the ones that we know that are not going to be good. So A, seems like a throw out. I'm going to say that one's a throw out. So it's B, C, or D. The answer here is C. Scientific data that supports the claim. Next, which of the following do you believe best represents the definition for reasoning? If you go through real quick, look at your notes. The answer here should be B, a collection of scientific principles, textual information, and prior knowledge that supports the claim, especially connecting it with the evidence. That's not part of that, but that's part of the answer too. So I want you guys to do the activity notes. What the activity is, it's a claim, and I want you guys to think about what evidence could you guys find to support that claim. Now, you don't actually have to go find the evidence because some of them are ridiculous questions. But think in your head, what would you have to find to be scientific? So, for example, one of the questions is um, something about Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift's the best artist of all time or something like that. That might not be your opinion, but say, what evidence could I find? Well, I could find record sales. I could find how much her tickets go for. I could find um, how many uh, shirts she sells or other CDs or memorabilia. I could figure out how many times she's been number one with her songs or albums. Those are some evidences I could use to support my claim. So go through each answer. Try to think of different ones you could find. Um, you don't have to, have to go find them, but think of different ones. So we're going to take the CER, CERs. The activity you just did was simple. It was a simple claim, simple evidence. We're going to actually create narratives. And what narrative in uh, language arts means, like a story. But in science, you create narratives too, like how your lab actually went, how um, experiments actually went through, and what happened during them. So when we're writing a CER, it's actually a quite easy setup. And the kids, when they first see it, they're like, wow, that's a lot of work. 
but there's a structure to it and it's a simple structure and even here i lay out what sentences should be but realistically um it's not a complicated process and you can expand this out i've written cer papers that are 20 pages long and i've written cer paragraphs that are seven sentences long so it just depends on how much information you have within them so sentence one is objective so what is your objective or purpose usually it's the question that's being asked so um for example my lab partner and myself were trying to answer the question, who is the greatest musical artist of all time? Our claim, sentence two, our claim is Taylor Swift is the top recording artist of all time. I would probably use all time again, it's duplicate. Evidence, what evidence we found, explanation connecting that evidence to the claim, and conclusion. Our conclusion is me and my lab partner believe that Taylor Swift, with all the evidence shown, an explanation that is the top artist of all time. So it's very straightforward and simple. You can do more or less sentences. It doesn't have to be seven sentences. It could be 20 sentences. It is just the general setup. And so I want to try this, and I just want us to practice this. It says assessment, but I'm just going to read through it and make sure you guys are on the right track when you do your CERs. So I'm asking you a focus question here. Your focus question is, is water wet? And so what I want you to do is come up with a claim. Yes, water is wet. No, water is not wet. Find some evidence online. Use that evidence to prove that your claim is right. Because. So because this, this is why this is right. Now, your evidence has to be scientific. Again, find good sources. Do not just use billyexplainstheworld.com. I don't know why I'm picking on Billy so much today, but you get the point actually use real sources. So go ahead and do this. I hope you guys enjoyed your first lesson here. Um, if you have any questions, where to turn things in, email me, let me know. But realistically, do this, turn in your notes with your assignment, uh, activity in the middle of it, and then this tag to the end, and you'll get your points if you do well. If you don't do well, I'll get a hold of you and let you know why. Okay. Thank you guys for uh, listening in. Have a great day.